welcome to our third Lunch and Learn in the series, uh, kind of what's changed for us during these uh, coronavirus times and what's going to be different afterwards. So today we have with us uh, Stephen Causey, who's the Vice President of Warren Avert Asset Management, and his primary responsibility is managing 401k complete. Uh, the firm's bundle retirement service, and so they also manage HC3's uh, 401k, but Stephen's going to talk to us about uh, not just 401k, but investing, budgeting, and all kind of money matters uh, during the uh, coronavirus pandemic. So welcome, Stephen. Thanks for having me. All right, so we'll start. We took a few, we got a few questions from employees, so I'll just kind of go through those and we can use those as a basis for the conversation. Uh, we, fortunately, we haven't had to have any staff reductions or uh, salary reductions here, but if, you know, someone has a family member who's been laid off or furloughed or had their compensation decreased, because of a business closure, what's the best way for them to get access to money right now? Uh, I mean, is borrowing from a 401k a good idea, dipping into some other savings account? What, how should people be thinking about that? Well, Griffin, the, the government has tried to address that question. Uh, as we're all familiar with the, the stimulus checks and the things they've tried to do from a regulatory standpoint, uh, I think I read the other day where over half of the individuals who qualify should have received their stimulus check by now. So there's some immediate cash that hopefully people have received to help with the problem. Second thing is if they've been laid off or furloughed, they should qualify for unemployment. So unemployment, another part of the legislation was increased uh, unemployment amounts. So applying for unemployment, I know the states are in process of getting those processed pretty quickly. Uh, with the increased amount, someone could get uh, almost $1,000 a week in unemployment. So from a cash perspective, you hope that the government has done enough to at least uh, help people in a temporary fashion. The next question you had though is, well, what about if, if, that does it, if that's not enough, what about the savings uh, or 401k? Uh, you really wanna tap your 401k last. So if you have savings, I think you wanna go into the savings first, uh, depending on the amounts. You would not initially want to fully deplete your, your emergency savings. If you get to that point, I think then you start considering the 401k. The, the other part that the legislation brought into play was a particular act under the CARES Act where you could qualify if companies adopt the CARES Act distribution option where people can take a distribution from their 401k and actually avoid the 10% penalty that normally applies. They still have to pay tax, uh, but you have to have been qualified, either you or your spouse, having, having the virus or been financially impacted by the virus. So there's at least some ways to uh, access cash during this time. Okay. So what about if you got the stimulus, your people who received the stimulus check but still have a normal income right now, uh, what would you suggest that the best way to use that, that stimulus check might be right now? Well, if they still have an income, uh, the design of the stimulus was actually to stimulate the economy, as the, the name implies. So the government would like us to all spend it, uh, whether that be on, uh, you know, going to local restaurants, supporting things that might be struggling right now to keep uh, companies in business. But it's also a great time to essentially reevaluate and determine, okay, do I have emergency savings? You might be fortunate enough to still have your job, uh, but if you were not, would you be able to survive with the savings you have on hand? And does the stimulus check maybe provide you with a jump start to uh, starting that emergency savings account? Is your financial future uncertain? And if so, should you also save that uh, in case your job should become uh, more questionable in the near future. And then lastly, if all those answers are no and you're, and you're fine, this might be an opportunity for people who uh, have never opened maybe an investment account. Uh, and they could look while the market's down to, to start with a, a small amount uh, investing and kind of dip their toe into the waters from an investment perspective. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I, uh, 
I made the mistake of trying to explain this to my kids about stimulating the economy and why it was important to support, to, to spend money now uh, while they were doing this check, and they took that to mean that we should buy every kind of add-on for our Fortnite that is possibly available. So I get that question multiple times per day, and the reason being we've got to help the economy is why we need this uh, Fortnite skin. But uh, so yeah, I think that certainly with the market down right now, uh, this if, if you're just starting an investment account, you should theoretically see some pretty good returns over the next few years uh, purchasing some stocks where we are today. What about, uh, so you talked a little bit about kind of financial planning in general. Uh, so maybe uh, if, if people haven't been used to doing a, a budget or maybe being in a place where they're particularly concerned about their finances, what's, what's a kind of starting point there if this is a, a Kickstarter to get a little deeper into personal financial planning and management? You know, it's times like this that oftentimes people will turn to focus on their finances. Um, so the first thing to do is even question, do you have a budget? You mentioned that term. Uh, we run into people all the time who have never actually put on paper, uh, what's my income? What's my expenses? When you take your income, you subtract your expenses in a monthly uh, perspective, the end number is either positive or negative. Um, if it's negative, then that typically means you're going further into debt, oftentimes credit card debt. If it's positive, then that means you have the opportunity for savings. So a time like this, we have a lot of time at home. I think people have found a lot of time to be catching up on things they have gotten behind on. This may be a great opportunity to evaluate and do I even have a budget? Um, let me go ahead and put this stuff on paper. But the biggest part comes down. The other thing about uh, the time now is that uh, people are not spending as much money. Um, so it, it's not a great time to evaluate how much you normally spend, but it may be a time that you realize what things you can do without. So when you're putting together a budget, it's a balancing between what you have historically spent in the past. You have to look at those expenses as either necessary or discretionary. Which ones do you have to have each month versus which ones do you just want to have each month? Um, and this time should have given you an opportunity to see, hey, maybe I can do without that Starbucks coffee every day. And if so, that can add to then that, that end, uh, end number at the end of each month if you have some money left over. But the key word is discipline. As with many things in our life, um, you, know, you can't come into a budget uh, unless you're gonna be disciplined and stick to it. Uh, I like to use the example of, 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 or the saying that a goal without a plan is really just a dream. And a perfect example is that as I hear people mention that they'd like to pay cash for a car one day because they've typically had a car payment. Well, you can put a plan together uh, to continue to pay your car payment, maybe even after you've had the car paid off into a separate account, build up enough cash and over a couple of car purchases by the end of that period, end up having cash to pay for a car. But you have to have plan and you have to have discipline. So this is a perfect opportunity um, when we're a little stressed about our finances to address those things now. So, so when things get back to normal, so to speak, we're ready to take advantage of that. All right, makes sense. Let's talk a little bit about, maybe about, our, about the 401k and the market in general and you know how people should, should think about the you know the hit they've taken. It's not you know it's not fun to go look at your 401k uh, balance these days. But uh, what are what are your recommendations at this point? Well, the the first statement would probably be don't look. Um, just just you know, look, 401k is a long term investment. Um, we've gone through some of these times before, but the investment principles haven't changed. Uh, every person needs to look at their account to determine if the risk that they're taking with their underlying investments is appropriate based on both their age and their tolerance for risk. So that part really is not, you should be doing that all along the way. Um, but we do remember that retirement plans are long-term and we can go back to periods like 2001, you know, 9-11, uh, 
We can go back to 2008 with the financial crisis. Both of those were times where we saw a, a pretty big drop in the market, um, but it came back each time. Uh, what you don't want to do is let your emotions drive your investment decisions. So there's even a study done by a company called Dalbar where they go and research uh, your, your basic investor and they do an analysis of their average returns. Over the past 20 years, a moderate portfolio has had a return of about 6%. The average investor has had a return of less than 3%. And the only reason that they can come back to is the trading of when they decide to buy and sell. And it's typically driven by emotion as opposed to um, just good fundamental investment uh, policies. So right now is not a time to sell out of the market. It's already taken a pretty good hit. As a matter of fact, it's probably a good time to consider buying into the market if you have some, some appetite for risk. However, if you're the person who is not sleeping at night because you're so worried about what your investments are doing, you probably are not appropriately invested to begin with. You may be too aggressive. So each person needs to look at their individual situation. Uh, don't let the fact that today it's down uh, drive a decision that might permanently alter what it could be years down the road. Uh, second, with the market being down, uh, still down over 20% from its high, you actually could consider uh, taking a little more risk if you haven't been taking much and you're, you're young enough to accept that. The second part I would say about a 401k is, you know, people oftentimes get hung up on how much they're putting in they elect to participate and then they forget about it. And in some ways that's a good thing, but in some ways we encourage people to reconsider and potentially increase their contributions as time goes on. A lot of us don't realize that, you know, if we increase our 401k contribution by say 10, 20, $30, that's really not life changing today. But that 10, 20, $30, accrued over 20 or 30 years could equate to an amount that could essentially be life-changing in retirement. So we encourage people to, to reassess uh, all the time how much they're putting in, particularly if your finances have not been hit at a time like this and the market's down, it may be a great time to reinvest. All right, yeah. Uh, what about, you mentioned the 401k disbursement opportunities out there for some people. What other kind of, uh, you know, opportunities are there to, to save money during this time? Payments that can be deferred or uh, what else should everybody just kind of be aware of? Yeah, that's another thing that many companies are taking advantage of this opportunity to be good stewards to all their customers. Um, there are certain payments that people need to make sure they're paying attention to. Um, for instance, student loans. Uh, federally owned student loans have been granted a deferral period, I believe all the way till September 30th, and they're not going to continue to accrue interest during that period. So those are kind of a no-brainer that if you can defer those payments, if you're struggling with cash flow, that's one that you're not really penalized by deferring those payments. So anyone with you know, student debt, if it's a federally owned uh, uh, loan, they should consider uh, asking for that extension because that's going above and beyond with no interest accrual. Now, all the other providers out there, whether it be credit card providers, whether it be a lot of landlords, uh, mortgage companies are offering some type of deferral. But in most of those cases, it's truly just that, a deferral. So what I would normally recommend is, unless you just are really struggling to make the payment, once again, the stimulus checks, the unemployment, continue to try to make your payments because they're either going to accrue interest or they're just going to add up over time to where when we do see the end of this, you're gonna have a pretty large amount that these companies are going to start requiring you to pay back over a fairly short period. So you might end up getting in the hole and not being able to cash flow very well when you do come out of it. So I think you analyze your situation, look at what payments may make sense, um, but don't just assume because they allow you to defer it, you should immediately do that. Once again, if you have the cash, uh, paying down liabilities is always a good thing. 
Okay. Yeah. So if you, so anybody who's deferring, who's not accruing interest on these payments, it's kind of like you said, a no-brainer. If you could just to go ahead and take that. But if you're going to be take, a, if you're going to have interest accrued in those accounts, you're going to want to keep making them as long as it's possible, uh, because otherwise you're just you're just paying more interest over time, and it's not really a financial gain for you to defer those those payments. Exactly. And and really, you know, I would say even if you didn't lose your job, you might still consider your student loan deferral because it, it's a century, it essentially becomes an interest free loan. Um, but I think there will still be people who want to remain disciplined and continue to make those payments just because you owe the money. The quicker you get a lot of those things paid off, the better position you'll be. So unless you just really fall in a financial crunch, I would try to avoid deferring some of those payments, particularly if they accrue interest. All right. Okay. Well, so uh, thank you. Any, anything else? Kind of. So, what are the th what are the themes of these lunch and learns? It's kind of been, you know, surviving uh, this period of this crazy world that we're in, and then what lessons are we going to take uh, from this that are going to make us better when we come out of it? And I think that your your comments about budgeting and looking at a financial plan, uh, yeah, this is a great time to do that because some of us, we have a lot more, a lot more time on our hands and, uh, you know, and we're not, I think, a place to think that way where maybe when things are, everything's going well, you're not necessarily, you're not really wired to think about those kind of things. Uh, so I think that was great advice and also the risk tolerance idea of really evaluating was I in the right, uh, was in the right risk tolerance bracket before. It's 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 easy to be in the right risk tolerance bracket when the market goes up, you know, 15% every year for 10 years. It feels great, but uh, I think it is a good time to to reevaluate and do. Am I really prepared for something else like this happening to me in six or eight years? And what what do I need to do to adjust my uh, portfolio right now? Any, anything we missed? Any other like uh, final parting comments before we go? I, I think I would just remind people to uh, try not to have too short a memory. Um, remember what this time is like when, particularly if you're financially stressed, uh, emergency savings accounts are extremely important. Um, if you don't have one, start one. Uh, because times like this, when you have no money in the bank and you're worried about where your next you know, meal is going to come from. Uh, it adds a tremendous amount of stress. So start those emergency savings accounts and then don't let, you know, a year or two down the road when we're back to quote normal, uh, forget that you still need those things because these things come up on us with uh, no warning. And so that's why having the emergency savings and having some, some investments on the side makes uh, life a whole lot easier and a lot less stressful. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, I think everybody will uh, hopefully enjoy this. I know we'll learn something, so I appreciate you. Uh, I know you guys are busy over at Warren Avery, so I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us this afternoon. Thanks for having me, Griffin. All right. Bye.